My name is Sion. I've never believed in ghosts until I came face to face with one. Whoa! So I set out on a quest to capture our true stories on video. Is anybody there? I'm only joined by my fellow investigator, Orion, and our equipment tech, Juan. Raw. Someone just scratched me? Extreme. Oh my god! Stop! Stop running! These are our true horror stories. Do, 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 do. That's for you. That's for you, one. That was for me? Okay, hi. <laughs> Hello. I thought, that, I thought you were like hyping yourself up. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Juan. If you watched the other friend video, then you would recognize me. If you didn't, um, shame on you. I'm, uh, shame on me. No, no, no. no, no oh, shame on the person. Much. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, You're shame just... on you guys. I was just so ready to take the blame. Hello. I'm in the comments of her videos. Orion also draws if you guys want to check out her channel. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I yep. need it. I need it. And so, what are you doing? Why aren't you subscribed? But if you liked us, if you like Sayon, subscribe. Okay, so do you guys want me to go first? Uh, I think it's your channel. I think it would be <laughs> it would be appropriate for the host to go first. Okay. So, on one particular night, my sister and I were on our way home from hanging out with our little cousins. I remember it was around like 11 p.m. And on the route to my house, there's a really dark road with no street lights. So the two of us were driving down that dark street when I saw a woman standing on the side of the road. As I looked out the window, we made direct eye contact. Without breaking it, I opened my mouth and said, isn't it so weird that she's out at night like this? The look on her face gave me the creeps, and it felt like she was reading my lips through the window. Meanwhile, my sister was really confused, and she replied with, Who are you talking about? It's just us here. So I looked into the side mirror to point out the woman again, but now she was gone. Even though I explained to my sister what I saw, she claimed that she never saw any woman on the side of the road. So, I tried to reason with myself, and thought it was probably just too dark for my sister to see. But, that didn't explain where she went so quickly. So, nevertheless, we got home safely, and my sister went straight to her room. And I was about to call Ryan so we could play Minecraft, like normal people do on a Friday night, when I heard some sort of weird scratching. When I looked around, I quickly realized it was coming from the bathroom underneath the stairs. So I put my ear against the door and listened. Even though the lights in the restroom were off, I could see a silhouette underneath the door moving back and forth, back and forth. Obviously, I wasn't gonna check that by myself. I can make horror stories for fun, so I'm not gonna die like a stupid protagonist. It would be very interesting if you died mysteriously, though. Oh my god, you guys gotta solve my death. Yeah, exactly. So, my next bright idea was to call my sister downstairs and tell her to check for me. Cause you know, better her than me, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so both of us counted down to three for when she would open the door. One, two, three! So my sister yanked the door open and sitting on the floor was our Roomba. <laughs> then my sister yelled at me for wasting her time and stormed back upstairs. I felt like an idiot for being so paranoid, but I just couldn't make any sense of it. How is the Roomba scratching the door like that when its motion sensor made sure it never touched any walls? Afterwards, I went to my room and fell asleep. But all night, I remember being so annoyed because the trees outside were tapping on my window. But when I woke up the next morning, I remembered my backyard doesn't have any trees. And that was one of the weirdest nights of my life. That's my story. I, yeah, that would be pretty weird. You couldn't play, you couldn't play Minecraft because you're so scared of Hero Branch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to do a Minecraft horror story because I was playing Minecraft with Orion and Deb one night. And then mm -hmm. we were playing a haunted house, and I was the last one in the map. And I saw Ryan's body was there, and I was like, I'll leave at the same time you do. And she was like, I'm already gone. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. 
<laughs> I remember that. I didn't. I really didn't fuck with you. I was like, I, I dipped. Like, I, I don't know how you. And I was recording like, it, right? But yeah, when I watched the recording, that part wasn't in there. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> that was scary. Okay, who wants to go next? Who uh, wants to rock. Go? Do we do rock paper scissors again? Rock paper scissors. Okay. Say on. You do three, two, one. You count okay, us down. Yeah. Why would you say three, two, one? Is one, two, three? It's three, two, one. One, it's three, counting two, down one, to three. see paper. Rock. Orion goes first. Ooh. It's not like it matters. Ooh. It's all interesting. <laughs> okay, okay. Orion, please tell your story. We'll shut up. So, uh, my story kind of takes place maybe when I was a bit young. So I had like a big imagination. This was in like houses lined up together, right? The person had like a wall that connected to your house and they could hear you. The weird thing about that was like, I was always scared of people living in between the walls of my house and like i knew that like the left side of the house was fine because there was like my neighbor there they were okay the other side was just empty it was just a lawn and then at night i'd be hearing like tapping and this is like a lot of things that fueled my imagination that made me think what if someone was living in between the house little borrowers gremlins i don't know it was interesting but looking back, that would have been scary for me. Because I was I'm a big fan of like Fey and shit. So it'd be cool if like a, a borrower is living in my walls. One day I was just in the house making food and whatnot. I remember my dad went out and my mom was off doing her own thing. I heard like a loud crash. God fuck, it scared me. You could hear like a bunch of jumbled string and it was terrifying i went to check my ukulele had dropped on the ground like seeing that made me wonder like why did it fall it was in no way in any position to have been able to fall with that i kind of just moved on we eventually moved away from that house and i will never know if that was just an um, off chance of something happening, or if somebody was pulling the strings. Ooh, pulling the strings, that's good. That was a good one, yeah. That was a I good like that ending. story. Like, can you like- I, I improvised that fucking line, hey yo! Oh. <laughs> You're so cool, brain. <laughs> hey yo! So what do you think happened, like, personally? Um, I think I was just an imaginative kid who was like, you know, this is scary. Uh, I don't want to think about it anymore. <laughs> you so don't want to think it. about it anymore. Juan, are you ready to go? Um, no, actually, can I reschedule? Yes, perfect. <laughs> I was going to do a story that a friend told me. I already did that, yeah. I'm not one to wear the same outfit twice, so... Yes, you are. You wear, like, the same three outfits, like you're a character in a hey. TV show. That's because they, look, like... they all look... You're sad. My story, this time, it's about me. It starts... 10-ish, mm, 12-ish years ago, and unlike now, back then I used to have a lot of friends. <laughs> you have us! Um, <laughs> I know, that's a joke. But I had a really good friend, right? One day we were just playing outside, like in this little playground that we had, and you always had like these neat biology facts to do what I was telling me. Even though like we didn't know biology back then, that was, that was what made him cool, because oh he read all these biology books. He was training was you to really be a nerd. Fun. Exactly. That's literally, yes. But one day I was just sort of playing on the playground. I was doing the monkey bars because I'm like that. And he was playing with the birds that had kind of gathered the center space of the park. And at one point I hear all his yelling and his running and his clapping. He just stops. I turn around and I look at him to see if he fell down or something. I see that he's just sort of staring away from me at this crow or a raven that was just perched on the electrical wires. And I was really confused because I thought he would really like crows because he's kind of, he was weird about that. I drop down from the monkey bars and I go over to him. He's frowning, like he was forcing himself to frown, you know? And he just goes, I have to go. And I was like weirded out by that. Uh, and I asked him why. He just sort of like lifts one hand up, one finger, and points over at the crow. 
he just goes, the crow, he knows. I thought he was playing pretend because he sounded like weirdly dramatic. So I played a lot and I ran over to the crow and I waved my arms around. The crow flaps away. At the same time, he yelled and ran away. That was just sort of the end of that. But then 10 years pass, we'd moved away, so we kind of lost touch. Now that we move back, I'm sort of asking my mom, like, oh, hey, do you still have Adrian's phone number? Do you still have Max's phone number? Those were like my friends, right? And she's like, oh yeah, I have some of them. And then I ask her about this kid. And she just tells me that she doesn't remember him, which struck me as kind of weird because he was my favorite. And I remember telling her all these fun science facts that he taught me, but it's been 10 years. I don't really pay it much mind. So I'm just like, oh well. And my little brother comes around and as one does when one is little, he has his imaginary friends. Stop, it was, it was no. st <gasps> First he starts telling me like, oh yeah, there were these little ghosts. And one day he tells me that he played with a boy. I'm just sort of like doing some homework in the living room with him. Kind of like absentmindedly because like most older brothers, I don't really care. <laughs> I was like, oh, like what was the boy like? And he just says he had kind of this shaggy, dirty blonde hair in these brown eyes. For a second, I'm kind of, okay, yeah, that's just a normal kid. And then he tells me that they talked a little bit about science. That definitely licked something in me because this kid was my favorite little friend at the time. So I was like, oh, uh, science? And then I realized he had described my friend from when I was a kid. I asked him more about it and he says, no, we just played Legos and we talked. He told me some, some fun little facts. And some of them he repeated back to me and I realized that I already knew them from when he was my friend. At this point, getting a little bit more paranoid. I'm not crazy, I'm not like, God, oh, he's imagining my old friend, but it's still like, oh, what a crazy coincidence. And so I start looking him up and then nothing comes up except for this very old article, like 60s, 50s newspapers. It talks about a little boy, unnamed, he had nobody to come claim him, no, no registry to his name. He had been, unfortunately, murdered by freak accident. I looked at the picture and was like, no, I can't, that's not him, <laughs> that's crazy. I just closed my laptop and I hear through the wall, my brother's room is on the other side of this wall, and I listen in and I hear that they're talking, well, that he's talking about biology and I go to move to his room to sort of check on him. And as I do, I see in just outside on one of the electrical wires, a single crow. And I just run, I bolt it over to my brother's room, slam open the door, and he's alone. From outside, I hear the crow yell and then fly away. And that is my story. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean yeah, anything. But if you're missing, we know what happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, watch it like 20 years. You're gonna be talking to your kids. And then they're gonna be like, Oh yeah, I have these imaginary friends I've seen out in Orion who tell me scary stories at night. <laughs> <laughs> if that happens, <laughs> I'm exercising the entire house. No, you wouldn't let us haunt you? No, oh, if you guys had died, I've had enough. I no, deserve my, my peace. <laughs> I did my time. You do not deserve your peace. You're not there with us. I would die first. No? Yes. I remember no. uh, we had to make like a book about ourselves. The where you see yourself in the future, I put dead. No! Why would you do that? No, <laughs> I drew a gray because I was like, oh god, like this is easy. I don't want to think about what I'm like in the future, so I'm just going to put a gray. <laughs> did your teacher like not talk so... to you? Like, are you mentally ill? <laughs> no. Are you okay, kid? Um, Eighth grade Orion, just like being obscenely emo. <laughs> oh my god. I remember asking a boy, 
do you think I'm charming? And he said no. <laughs> that boy was one. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys want to know who's beautiful? Me. Oh, who? The girl watching this. It's <laughs> 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 like a little lip bite. Sheesh! 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 <laughs> um, when y'all die, I'm gonna play that at your funeral. <laughs> you better. You better. <laughs> just like any last word. Sheesh! Cheese. 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 Cheese.